Consider the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. This is a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. Now, this circle has lots of familiar points. It has the point 1, 0. It has the point 0, 1. It has some other points on there, like, for example, if you go to 1 half, it would have the point 1 half root 3 over 2. How do I know that's a point on the circle? Well, I just plug in 1 half for my x, I plug in root 3 over 2 for my y, and I check that this is true. 1 half squared is a fourth. For y, 3 half, uh, root 3 over 2 squared is 3 over 4, so I get 1 fourth plus 3 fourths equals 1. Sure enough, it's true. Okay, so a variety of points on this circle. I might want to think about what are the tangent lines to those points? For example, at this point right here, there should be some line tangent to it that looks something like this. So, so what would be the slope of that tangent line? How would I find the slope of my tangent line? And, and well, well, we know what we need to do. We should find some kind of derivative. But the problem is the expression as it's written right now, x squared plus y squared equals 1, is, is not a function in terms of x. It's, it's, it involves, it has both x's and y's. It's an equation that has both x's and y's. And so one way we might try to approach this is we might just try to solve for y. So, so here's one of our approaches. Approach number one is, is we could solve for y. And we could say, okay, when we solve for y, we get y squared is 1 minus x squared, so y will just be the square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, that's not quite true. Yes, this will give you the points on the top half, but, but you also have points on bottom when the y is negative. Where do those come from? Well, th those, come from, those just come from the negative square root of 1 minus x squared. When, when you have y squared equals something, y could either be the square root or the negative square root. Okay, but, but since we're focused on a point on top right now, we're really worried about when, when your y value is positive, so we're going to work with this top function. Now, now, now we can go ahead and we can find the derivative. So now that you solve for y, you can calculate your derivative. You can do d dx. And, and so what do we get? We get the y prime the derivative of y is just the derivative of the square root. The square root is the same thing as 1 minus x squared to the 1 half power. So that 1 half will come down and be subtracting 1 from it to get minus 1 half. And then by the chain rule, you need to times this by the derivative of the inside. So times minus 2x. And what do we get? Well, the 2 and the 1 half cancel. And hence we have negative x, negative x, divided by, since it's a negative power, the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, so, so let's go ahead back to our original problem. We're at this point where x is 1 half. We want to know what is the slope of our tangent line. We would just plug 1 half into this. We would just say, well, what is y prime at 1 half? And we would get, if you plug a half, it's, it's minus a half on top, all over the square root of 1 minus a half squared. So 1 minus a fourth. Let's think about what that gives us. So on bottom, we'll have root 3 over the square root of 4, which is 2. And you end up with minus 1 over root 3. Great. We get the slope of our tangent line. And, and this is a fine method. But what I want to show you is another method, because sometimes this approach won't work. Sometimes this first step is really hard. It's really difficult to solve for y, maybe even impossible. And so, so here's a different approach. Instead of solving for y and then calculating the derivative, we're going to just reverse the process. We're going to calculate the derivative. We're going to find the derivative, dy dx. But, but how? I mean, you look at the problem. You look at x squared plus y squared equals 1. You're like, how do you find the derivative of this thing? Well, we're going to find the derivative 
by treating your y as just some unknown function of x. I, I don't know what it is, but let's just say y is some function of x. Then let's see how this works. When I come here and I take the derivative, I'm still going to have as my derivative of x squared 2x. But then when I see my y squared here, what I should be thinking that is that, that y squared is just going to act like some function squared. So when I take the derivative of y squared, it's just like taking the derivative of some function squared. Well, what do you get? You get 2 times that function, so, so 2 times whatever your function f is, times then the derivative of that function, times the derivative of the function by the chain rule, right? The 2 comes down, you leave the function the same, but then you have times it by its derivative, which is the same as doing 2y, the 2 comes down, you have the inside function y the same, but then you need to multiply it by its derivative y prime. So if we try that principle right here, we get the derivative of y squared is just 2y y prime, and that comes out to equal the derivative of 1, which is 0. Notice what we have now. We have an expression that has a y prime in it mixed in with some other stuff. So, so now what we're going to do, we need to isolate that y prime. So, so instead of solving for y, here our second step is we're going to solve for y prime. So, so let's see what we get. Solving for y prime, we get moving the, the minus uh, 2x to the other side is minus 2x. We get 2y y prime is minus 2x, which means that y prime is just minus x divided by y. Now you might look at that and be a little bit concerned. I mean, after all, it seems like I got a different thing for y prime here than, than when I solved it over here to the left using our typical approach. But is it really different? This just says it's negative x divided by y. What is y? Well, if you solve for y, we said it was the square root of 1 minus x squared. So this would really just be minus x over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is exactly what we have before. This also lets you immediately calculate the derivative. If I want to find the slope of the derivative, I just plug in my x value and my y value. I get negative 1 half on top, and then on bottom, root 3 over 2, which simplifies to the same thing, negative 1 divided by the square root of 3. This second approach is called implicit differentiation. You start out with some function, an equation that has both x's and y's. And then instead of solving to make it a function of just x, what you do is, is you just take the derivative of the entire equation of both sides of it, just treating your y as if it is some function of x.